Well, let's uh, let's open with prayer real quick. Father God, thank you for this time that we have together. Thank you for all these opportunities you give us, these incredible members that we get to take care of, all of the nerds that are so important in uh, caring for these members and helping them with their problems. We ask that you uh, help us to behave in a way that's pleasing to you. In Christ, name we pray, amen. All right. Um, so this may be familiar from last time. This is just kind of an overview. We're going through something similar as we did in our first quarterly meeting. Just what is Gizmo Cares? Um, you know, what is the Circle of Care, the Neighborhood Nerds? I'm not really going to talk about IT too much, but the Technology Center a little bit. Um, just mention that we do have other divisions for the new nerds that are coming in. Uh, some of our solutions, tools we use, those kinds of things. So, Gizmo Cares. Who is Gizmo? You know, Gizmo is our uh, mascot that we refer to. He's also our uh, example of what everybody, what we want all the nerds to be because Gizmo is patient and kind and caring and always concerned about giving the members the best experience possible. You know, he's, uh, he's our goal as nerds inside of Neighborhood Nerds and uh, Gizmo Cares to, uh, to strive towards of uh, ever patient, you know, uh, very empathetic, always listening and always caring about the members. Um, you know, why does Gizmo care? Uh, well, let me go back to that. So, you know, we, we've talked about this before, but uh, the, the big thing is that we just feel like all these people out in the world need someone on their side. And uh, that's why we set up Neighborhood Nerds in the beginning. That's why we've been doing all of these things that we've done with the different divisions and their goals and objectives also, is normal people, we don't feel like have a chance. Like, you know, there's, there's so much technology in the world. There's so much going on that uh, they don't have time to look into. And it seems like other vendors out there are, are just looking for opportunities to take advantage of them and more focused on making money than actually caring for them. So our goal would be all of Gizmo Cares is about, you know, you're, you are paying a monthly fee, but it's in an effort for us to always learn more about you, always care for you, and always figure out ways to make your life better so that you have that advocate, that caretaker on your side. Uh, GCI's purpose is right in line with that. Uh, our goal is Multifold. I mean, it, it's uh, multifaceted. We 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 want to uh, make people happy. We want to save our members time because we don't want them wasting their precious time whenever they should be spending it somewhere else with family, friends, uh, work, whatever. We want to take those tasks off of their plate and help them with those things. We also want to give them peace of mind whenever we say that. We want to. Um, let them know that once they hand us something, it's going to be taken care of. It's not, uh, they don't have to stress about it, worry about it. Uh, we are going to care for them and get it done. Um, the other, you know, the purposes would be we want, we want GCI to always be this place where we're leveraging uh, young people that are coming through, young, smart power users. So we're looking at high school students, college students, uh, some of these people fresh out of college that are, um, you know, wanting to help that don't necessarily want to be in like food services or something like that, but they want to be in something where they can uh, learn and participate and help. So we want to be that place where young people come in, they, you know, hopefully say, I can't, even, I can't believe I get paid to do this. You know, I, I love doing this. I love caring for people. I love fixing these things. And they, but they get these other experiences of uh, getting to build, they, they get resume builders. You know, they get to talk about how they um, worked in this customer service, they built um, users' manuals, they designed standard operating procedures, they uh, built workflows, they, you know, did like all of the thing, the peripheral things that you can do in this job while you're taking care of members are very important um, later in life uh, for other careers, especially whenever you're talking about like standard operating procedures, which are gizmo guides, 
um, building processes and procedures is a big deal. Business processes is a huge deal. Anytime you can write that on your resume that you participated in design and build of those things, that helps you no matter what field that you're in. <clears throat> and then, you know, another purpose of GCI is to um, help everybody, not just you know, members that are paying us, but also everyone in the communities where member centers exist. That's why we've built these kingdom funds to be able to help people out. Like I said, we want to save them time and provide peace of mind. Kingdom funds are all about uh, taking some money in what we're setting it aside so that uh, the company and you guys can do good in the local community. You can actually um, go out and you know uh, provide food and clothing and shelter and care to those that are in need in the local community. The memberships, um, you know, we, we talk about memberships because they're, it's the way that we, um, you know, we, we believe that you, you can't just walk in cold to, a, to a, uh, a customer's home and do a very good job of solving problems. It's very important that you establish a relationship, get to know them, get to understand what their goals and objectives are, and then provide the right kinds of solutions for them because we believe that a lot of times they've been prescribed the wrong solutions and that's what's stressing them out. You know, they, they have the wrong phone or laptop or device in their life. They have the wrong service. Uh, they don't know how to change it and it creates stress in their life. You know, how do we, how do we do this? We, we get them onboarded with a, a whole process. So they sign up, we enter information about them, we send them a welcome packet, you know, we, we get them into our system and get to know them. And, and, and hopefully it's a very structured manner using our tools that we have. And then, you know, what is Gizmo Cares? It is, uh, it's really um, kind of a concierge service for anything that our members need, but we tend to focus on technical solutions for, for that. So that's kind of the realm that we live in is we're almost always looking for a technical solution to their needs, you know. And sometimes it's things like the member needs tickets to an event, you know, and the nerds are calling around and finding tickets to that event, or they want reservations at a uh, hotel or a uh, restaurant, and the nerds make those phone calls and make that happen and send them an update about it. So it's sometimes it's us levering, leveraging technology to do something for them. Gizmo Circle of Care, we talk about that a lot. That's really the job that the nerds have is working Gizmo Circle of Care. Um, every time a request comes in from a member, either from a phone call, an email, a text, a chat, whatever, we want you to start with Discover. So we want you to ask a lot of questions and write those questions down. It's like, we don't expect you to know the answers. Um, and that's why I talk about showing your work all the time, asking the questions. Uh, I don't know if you guys used to watch uh, Magic School Bus at all, but, uh, you know, Miss Frizzle, like, you know, get, get dirty, you know, get involved, engage. We want you to get in there and understand what you don't know and start asking some questions about it. If a member says, hey, I need help with my website, then you got to start jotting down questions like, you know, that you don't know, like, uh, well, who is this, you know, why do they have a website? Is it actually their website? Is it another website? Are they calling something else a website? You know, like all of these things that you need to discover to figure out you're kind of a, a detective. The next thing that we do in Gizmo Circle of Care, and, and you guys have seen the graphic and it's got the six steps, but the next thing is to plan because we want you to take all of the information that you've gathered and discover includes making phone calls to the members, uh, talking on Slack to your other nerds, um, researching things, searching out YouTube videos, um, calling vendors, you know, whatever you need to do to really get, a, get a, a full plan put together of this is what the member's asking us to do uh, because sometimes the member asks you the wrong things. They don't, they don't have the right language. You know, they don't know what they don't know, so they can't even phrase the questions properly. So after you've done the discovery, 
then you build a plan, which is really just some written steps. You know, it may, may be a gizmo guide. I mean, you may look and find a gizmo guide for exactly what they're asking for, and you just stick that in the document and say, hey, you know, I'm sending you over something in email right now. Let's talk about it and review it, which is our next step. And see if you're comfortable with this. Do you, know, do you want to do it? Do you want us to do it? Um, here's the cost associated with it. Here's the time impact. So that, that's what the review process is about. We want to communicate with the members so there's no surprises. So they understand what the costs are going to be associated with it and the time impact. After they accept it, then we move into implementation. So we say, okay, cool. You know, either they're going to implement it or we're going to implement it. Uh, if they're going to implement it, you know, hopefully they can follow the steps and we've identified it as something at a member level and they can get it done. If we're implementing it, you know, we get the job done, we document it, we build a gizmo guide and, you know, we're educating not just um, the member, we're educating other nerds, we're educating the company, everything. So you may be updating gizmo guides, you may be updating processes, you may be updating, um, you know, their profile, everything. So that in that education format of uh, just letting them, everybody know what's going on. And then you maintain it. So you'll record a lot of documents, you'll record um, all of your findings, everything, so that the next nerd doesn't have to reinvent the wheel. They can come right in and pick up where you left off if this member ever has this request again. Gizmo Guides. Um, this is the product of what, of all of our efforts really. So our goals are to make members happy all the time. The product that shows that we're doing our work is we're building Gizmo Guides. Whoops. Okay. Let me put that on Do Not Disturb. Um, you know, so gizmo guides are what we're, we're building for members. Uh, members can, members and the public can get on to our, any of our gizmo guides at kb.gizmocaresinc.com, which there's also a link on the website for that. Um, do you guys, uh, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with the gizmo guides. You know, we have a whole process for building them. So we use Google Docs to, uh, to build them because HubSpot doesn't have a great templating system and doesn't allow you to duplicate or copy an existing guide to start from. So, so we end up putting them, we, we, we have a template in uh, Drive, which if you do new document in the Gizmo Guides folder, new document from template, it will give you the Gizmo Guide template. Then you just fill that out and it's, it's supposed to be a recipe format and instruction format to so that somebody could follow those steps and it, and it tells you like what to expect and everything else what tools you're going to need how long it's going to take you to do this but like i'm saying this is the product of your work you know you if you guys whatever you guys do there should be a gizmo guide that's being created from that um, you're always there to help the next nerd out so that's why we build gizmo guides that's why we do all this documentation is the next nerd helping that member shouldn't say, well, we're going to have to wait till next week when Bob comes back in because he's the only one that knows anything about you. You know, our whole goal is there's tons of documentation, tons of notes there. It's very structured with the gizmo guides and the pro member profile and the properties that we have that any nerd ought to be able to log into HubSpot, read about the member and come up to speed with who they are, what we did last and be able to pick right up and help them out. So, you know, always be thinking about you're trying to leave information so that the next nerd would not have to call you. And your next time. So, you, you know, you don't want to reinvent the wheel every time you do something. So building gizmo guides is helping you with your next time doing this exact same thing. You know, you just want to be able to reference that document and do it just as easily next time. It always improves member relationships by having the gizmo guides. Um, you know, they, they trust more. They, you know, that, that's where we, we save time, not just the member's time, but our time. Plus, we give them that, uh, that peace that we talk about all the time. You know, we want to give them peace of mind. So when they see these gizmo guides, they understand their membership dues are paying for us to do lots of work for them, not just fix broken things. 
And the gizmo guides are the missing user's manual. I, I don't know if you've heard us say that before, but you know, all of the stuff that we have in our house, in our business or whatever, like all these little gadgets that beep and buzz and whirl and whatever, um, they don't necessarily have user's manuals that are readable and understandable by normal humans. You know, they're, they're really written more for a nerd to read. Uh, and then they're definitely not written in a format that's customized to the usage that the members has. You know what I mean? So yeah. we want to build documents that, is, that are very customized for the member. These are our intellectual properties, part of our brand. You know, that's why we have them trademarked. Um, so it's very important for us to always follow the same format and design them in the same way so that uh, that just helps build the brand and make it stronger. These are, like we talked about, standard operating procedures and processes and then standards. This helps us to, um, you know, with the franchise model, with getting other additional nerds on board, we always have these guides that help the nerds hit the ground running and be able to solve problems for members quickly and handle any kind of request that comes in. All right, so who are our nerds? Our nerds are smart power users. So uh, smart's probably not correct, but I mean, all, all of the nerds seem to be of a certain level of intelligence or a certain level of critical problem solving kind of uh, skill set, right? They're, they're power users, which identifies them more of their users of technology instead of technicians or supporters of technology. I don't have a remote at all. Okay. You can just let it go to voicemail right now. We'll, we'll catch up after the meeting. You can do it. Do not disturb if you want. Um, so, so you guys, we expect the nerds to be power users of technology, not technicians or trained or certified or anything like that. Um, as we know, you know, GTC is a little different and GIT is very different. Those, those people do need to be certified and be some more of that mercenary kind of person where they come in and able to solve problems quickly with very little information. Don't, they don't require the relationship. <clears throat> But for the most part, GCI works around this, you know, power users of technology that are trying to help uh, um, people use technology the best way possible. All right. <clears throat> most, for the most part, our nerds are high school students, college students that are usually on a technical path, like they're thinking more in line with... Uh, engineering or computer science or gaming, you know, or so something. They're, they're like in this more technical usage kind of realm. Um, you know, the experience of a lifetime, I, I believe this is, it's just from my experience of being in the corporate world um, and being into, uh, with my job in the corporate world, I went into all kinds of other factories. So I, I worked in you know, Ford and Toyota and DuPont and m and Mars and, you know, like just all kinds of things where uh, steel mills and coal processing facilities. To me, as if, if I had had something like Neighborhood Nerds whenever I was a college student, I, I would have been so much more prepared and uh, I, I it would have been great to have this opportunity because I know what it's doing for you guys, even though you may not realize it. The fact that you are talking about standards and, and business processes and structured documents and SOPs in the gizmo guides, that is so valuable whenever you hit the um, workforce. You know, like those employers are gonna look at a bunch of resumes. All the resumes are gonna say, college student, grades, you know, volunteered here and did this and did that. Whenever you put things on there, though, of, you know, help develop standard operating procedures, help develop business processes, help develop a branding channel with videos, help develop, you know, like it, that kind of stuff, they, they pull your resume out and put it at the top whenever you have that kind of stuff on there. So definitely take advantage of the peripheral stuff that's 
more around this job that you're doing. Uh, oh, make the most of it. That's what I meant by that was, uh, you know, take advantage of this opportunity. Um, also, the networking. I mean, I, I ask you guys to engage the members all the time, talk to the members all the time, build those relationships. These people that are our members are very important people. You know, they, 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 can, uh, they can really help you in your career. So, uh, you know, really get to know them. Get, get on those first name basis. Uh, get where you, they, they enjoy seeing you come, you know, and they want to talk to you on the phone and everything. Like really make the most of it. Uh, the job, you know, we've talked about the job before. It's really to engage the members as, as often as possible. So you want to, and you want those high touch engagements. Like you don't, don't default to sending out a canned email, right? Like default to picking up the phone and calling the member and talking to them and saying, Hey Bob, you know, how's it going, man? I hope you're doing okay today. You know, I just wanted to check in on you, give you a status update. That's what you want to do. Uh, texting may be, you know, a second to that. Uh, maybe, e you know, emails are like later down and then even these canned emails that we build <clears throat> without it. You know, I'm, I'm, I want you to use the canned emails, but I want you to put a little flavor in it that's you, you know, talking to the member. Because the, the engagement, the relationship will save us so many times. So if you have a really good relationship with the members and you're talking to them all the time and they know who you are, you can drop the ball of... <clears throat> forgetting to call them back for a couple of weeks, you know, <laughs> and they won't quit. They'll stay because, well, you know, they're good kids and, you know, I, I always enjoy working with them and everything. And they'll, they'll forgive you. Uh, they won't forgive you if the, all they know about you is a canned email that comes out, you know, once a month or something. They need to know you. Uh, always, you know, the job is working Gizmo Circle of Care like we talked about. So always work Gizmo Circle of Care every time a request comes in. And again, this is something that's going to help you later in life. When, when you come up on all of these new challenges that are out there, uh, you'll get a little bit of training when you go to the corporate world doing something, but you're going to have to be prepared to have a, you know, what is your methodology for approaching every new request that you're manager gives you or you your client has gives a circle of care is a good one you know discover ask a bunch of questions um plan you know come up with a written plan that you're going to review with the person your manager or the or the client or whatever so really get familiar with it and really get in the habit of doing it and it's going to pay big dividends for the rest of your life Writing gizmo guides. I mean, you get in the habit of writing a gizmo guide, uh, standard operating procedures. You know, you'll hear, you'll hear out in the corporate world, SOPs, standard operating procedures. That is a gizmo guide, right? Like, um, get in that habit of writing those, and it's going to serve you well everywhere you go. You know, it's going to be a big deal. And have fun. We want all of our nerds to have fun. So it shouldn't be stressful. It shouldn't be hard. It should be engaging the members, you know, joking around, having a good time with them, providing cool information to them as often as possible, really thinking about each member and go in and, and without being asked, go in and update their profile, go in and give, give members a call that we haven't talked to in a while and say, Hey, you know, I was just thinking about you today and, um, wanted to ask you a few questions so I could update your profile. You know, what's, What's your favorite color? You know, I, I don't know. Like, you know, like call up and update the profile in a manner that would help other nerds know this member as well as you do. You know, as that's the goal. Um, build your resume, like I talked about. You know, think about what are the things you want on your resume to make you stand out above anybody else, and. And then take advantage of this opportunity to do those things. I mean, whenever I was in school as an engineering student, UT didn't offer a, a C programming class, and I wanted to take C. It was only computer science students that were allowed to take uh, the C course. We had to do Fortran and Cobalt. So I went to a graduate student 
I mean, a graduate professor and said, hey, um, I want to learn C. If I get a few other guys, can I set up a class and you'll, will you sign off on it? And he did. So I, I created a class my senior year for me and four other guys to learn C for that semester. I mean, we all got A's and the professor was happy because he didn't have to talk to us because he didn't really want to talk to us. But, you know, we did a, our own made up course, created it, made it and got to put it on our resume, which really helped whenever we were going out for jobs because that was something that stood out a little more over the other electrical engineering students. You know, we had done a project and see. Um, so, you know, Neighborhood Nerds is our, that, that was our first business that we thought, hey, this is something that's really needed. A little member center in the middle of a community that people could walk in and out of. It's kind of a coffee shop, bar, uh, Apple store combined. The nerds hang out in there and they just help people as they come in. Um, you know, the nerds are, uh, like we talked about, you know, very special people because we have, they, they all are about engaging and listening and empathizing and caring for the members. They're all advocates for the members too, to other vendors. So you should always be on the member side, trying to protect them from these horrible vendors that are out there like Comcast. Um, you know, and then how, how are the, how is the member center structured? We've talked about this, you know, a manager, uh, the account manager is more of an inside salesperson that's always thinking about the solutions we offer and making the members aware of that. Because like we said, the members don't know what they don't know, so they can't even ask for the help. Uh, we have inside nerds that are in the member center all the time. We have remote help nerds that are answering the phones. We have, uh, and uh, we, you know, the remote help nerds are also um, checking voicemails and chats and stuff like that. But, but all that stuff should be coming into the same inbox and creating tickets in the same pipeline. So the remote help nerds should just be able to work from that pipeline for any incoming requests from the members. Um, we have the outside nerds that are, the reason they're bulleted differently there is the outside nerds are almost a different division. We're kind of thinking of the outside nerds kind of like an Uber model where they could be everywhere and just flip on the app and say, okay, I'm ready to go on service calls. And then when somebody needs to dispatch somebody, they just find an outside nerd that's close by that could go take care of that member. And we're thinking they would probably report to maybe GTC or maybe GIT, something like that. So the outside nerds are, you know, separate but same. So they're, they're like the inside nerds and the remote help nerds, but they're just going on site. <clears throat> so what are our goals and objectives? You know, we're, we're wanting to uh, grow members, get, find more members and uh, help them. And we want to uh, have more locations. That's uh, what we want to do with neighborhood nerds. So we want to have, want to increase our membership all the time and then find uh, new locations when they're based on the members. So as we grow members and there's some in West Knoxville and we go, okay, there's a pocket over there. Let's look for a member center location in that area. GTC is Gizmos Technology Center. Uh, I put, I added that to this uh, presentation because I was thinking, uh, I don't know if everybody knows what GTC is. We talk about it, but you know, acronyms can get very inside baseball very quickly. So what's the purpose of GTC? You know, GTC is about um, doing those, more of that repair, maintenance, uh, setups, upgrades, configuration, staging, that kind of stuff. Plus, they're also tasked with um, websites and, and uh, managing Carbonite and, and uh, all of the networks and Jive and all that jazz. So they get the revenue comes into GTC for all of those other services. And, and they're also responsible for those things. And the GTC people are a little different than your normal nerds. They're more techy, you know, more, um, more about the technology and more skilled and experienced in the technology than your average nerd, you know. Um, the resources that they have, you know, they, they have a facility the facility is set up to handle shipping and receiving and, um, you know, maybe we'll even have 
servers for doing backups in of the members equipment and have all the tools and the workbenches and everything in a in a in a GTC. And GTC is designed to be a support system for, you know, all of the other um, all the member centers that are in an area. So right now we have GTC above one member center in Sequoia Hills. The goal would be GTC would more, be more centrally located, no real public facing uh, arm. It would be more of a big warehouse uh, you know, center or something like that that you'd go into to work. And the members would engage at the member centers with the inside nerds or, or outside nerds that would come deliver things to them. So some of the solutions, you know, we do clean up setup of devices, which uh, you guys should be very familiar with. And the goal there is to start the member off on the right foot so that we get the, we, we make sure we have carbonite so it's always backed up and secure. We get them as safe as possible as far as, uh, let me go back to that. We get them safe as possible to avoid viruses and them clicking on the wrong thing, you know. So that's why we try to do things like we set up don't let them run as administrator, but let them run as a limited user so that if they do click on a link, it doesn't have administrative rights. Um, we make sure that they have, we have remote access to their computer or their device so that we can support them remotely. You know, the, those kinds of things are what we want to do is get them lean and mean so that it's easy to support. Some of the other stuff we'd want to do is think about um, like storage management. Uh, so you know, if they're an Apple user, so if they have iOS devices and, and Mac OS devices, we'd want to get them set up with iCloud so that they can easily share photos and documents and stuff like that across all their devices. We would want to, um, you know, maybe, maybe we'd segment their data from their operating system so that we make it very easy for all of the data to be backed up easily and migrated if anytime you're doing an upgrade or anything like that. Um, when we have them in for cleanup setup, we use that form that we talk about to document everything so that we know the make and model and, and year of the device that we're talking about so we can plan on upgrades for the members. Uh, we shouldn't wait for them to call us and say, hey, this is an issue. We should be able to look in the system and go, hey, we've got 10 members that are going to be needing upgrades soon. So we, we do repairs in GTC. So if there's something broken, that's actually where we would fix things. Um, we try to sub those things out right now because we don't want to just, you know, do a ton of repairs in the shop. But eventually we would have technicians that would be doing repairs, you know, replacing screens and stuff like that, batteries. Upgrades, so adding RAM, adding hard drives, uh, you know, and uh, putting in new video cards, cooling, whatever. Staging. Staging is where we would take like a ring system and get it all set up or get the locks all set up for a yell system or get uh, Jive configured or High 5 and we would have it staged and tested and then it could be packaged up and delivered to the member so that outside nerds could get it set up. Uh, websites. You know, we have the WP engine. We, uh, we, we, that's the main thing that I think we can bring to the table because that's always an issue. There's tons of website developers and designers out there. I almost feel like that's a commodity to build websites, but the, the hosting and the management behind the scenes is critically important because a lot of those people just take it for granted that they've got, you know, Bluehost or whoever, and so does the member, and then they get it on there and then something happens and they can't recover and they don't have a backup and all that jazz where that's our responsibility to say, we're going to put you on WP Engine. It has great backups all the time. It has a uh, multi-phased um, development process for development and staging and uh, production. And we're going to help manage the back end of it for you. Uh, goals and objectives for uh, GTC is support all of the member centers. So. Every GTC, there should be one probably in every city or maybe a couple in a city or something, depending on the size. They'll support all of the member centers. So they'll handle shipping, receiving, purchasing. They'll um, do staging and configurations. They'll have trucks that are running back and forth to member centers to collect stuff and drop stuff off all the time so the members don't have to 
drive across town to where the members, I mean, where the technology center is, they just deal with their local member center. The GTC should be a profit center. Right now it's still a cost because we just haven't grown the business enough. So right now it's still costing us money to have GTC every, every month, but it's supposed to be a profit center. So it should be making money off of its cells, you know, doing cleanup setups and staging and ring systems and everything else. And then we want to increase the staff as we as the need increases so that we can continue to support everybody out there. Other divisions, you know, we have the industrial solutions, which is the stuff that I do in my day job. Um, bookkeeping and analytics, you know, we, we don't have any bookkeeping analytics clients right now. We had about five at one time. Um, we still have that as a business model and we're going to ramp that back up, but it's just not a priority right now or a focus right now. Uh, residential services, again, <clears throat> we can do that, and we've done a few of those little jobs. That's like, that's like handyman service kind of stuff, or even raking leaves or cleaning out gutters. But we, it's not a focus right now. We're, you know, that's going to be something that we'll add on as we grow our membership. Gizmo's property management, we're playing around with that right now with my property and and uh, Mark's properties, so that. Um, GCI, Gizmo's Property Management Group, GPM, charges me and Mark to manage our properties. So that's that's helping with cash flow right now, plus also uh, exploring and experimenting with how that might look for members. And then, you know, we're always developing more divisions that are going to be in alignment with this same goals and objectives and uh, caring for the members that are in the system. So what are some of our solutions that we use? We use Carbonite for continuous backup, automatic backup, LastPass for credentials management, uh, Datto for remote access. And, it, and it's more than that. It's more than just remote access. It's a you know monitoring and management solution. So we should really get Datto configured where it's, if it's on a machine, it is telling someone in GTC on a big panel this is what's happening with all the computers that are out there. It should know, like if they're running out of hard drive space or if they need uh, security patches or updates or anything like that, it should be warning you guys and think how cool that would be to be proactive in contacting a member and saying, hey, you know, I was just noticing on the system that uh, you're running out, of, running low on hard drive space. You know, that, ca that can have some negative impact to your computer and your experience. So let's get that cleaned up and uh, you know come up with a plan for doing that or security updates or whatever. High Five is our video conferencing system that we sell to business users primarily. Um, we have, I think we have two of those systems installed right now and we have one. So we're a reseller for that. So the more we sell of those, the better because we get money monthly off of those subscriptions. Jive is our phone system. It's our... Uh, uh, you know, our IP phone system that we have, our VoIP system, and works very well. As you guys know, you know, you play with the phones all day long. The new app, the Go-To Connect, works very well on mobile devices, and it's just a great way to have, to offer a phone, a business phone solution to a small business. Very, very affordable. Americom is one of our partners that if you have a business that's looking to get uh, new internet connectivity or our phone systems or I mean really all kinds of things you can uh, call Americom and submit that and then get a quote from them uh, for uh, that business very easily through their quoting system we should have gizmo guides on all of these things so if we don't you guys need to be building them so that you so it's very easy for you to offer these solutions and implement them we also offer, you know, Office 365 and, and G Suites to our members and set those up and configure them and get the MX records and the auto discovery and all that jazz configured for them on the back end. My Cloud IT, that's our virtual machine system, like servers and workstations that can be in the cloud. Currently, the only one we have, I think, is with TDC, I believe, and it's um, on the Microsoft solution, the Azure solution. I would like to see us uh, evaluate the Amazon solution because it looks like it might even be a little more affordable uh, to use the AWS solution. 
and try to migrate some people to that. Um, I, I'm not sure if it's a really good cost-effective solution for a lot of people. It seems cool, but we've had a couple of issues with it and haven't been able to recover as quickly as I like. Um, and these people are paying, oh no, we also have uh, Will's dad on it, uh, um, um, Oak Ridge Hardwoods is also a MyCloud IT VM solution. So though that, that solution's kind of expensive. It's like 150 bucks a month per workstation, something like that. Um, I think TDC, we're having to charge like 250 a month because we're just basically passing the cost on to them right now. We're not making any money at all doing this. And it hasn't been as bulletproof as I would like for it to be. Um, I've set up virtual machines before just at my, on my home network that have worked great. So I take an old box, put uh, you know, a Linux kernel on it or something, and put uh, you know, like a, the, oh, what, what was it, the Open VM or whatever it's called from Sun. I would put, install that on it and have like several virtual machines running on it and just set up my own router so that I could get to them from outside the network. That's more of a nerdy solution and requires a lot of maintenance. <laughs> this Supposedly, these things are supposed to be a little better than that and a little more bulletproof, but that wasn't the case recently with a couple of problems we had with Azure. So that's why I want us to explore AWS as another solution. WP Engine, I'm loving WP Engine. That's our WordPress website hosting service. Uh, great, great solution. Orbi, Unify, you know, we've, we've installed a lot of the Unify, the Ubiquiti equipment. Um, Orbi is more of a, uh, um, you see it a lot more in the residential. That's our solution for Wi-Fi, um, and it's a mesh system, where the Unify system is not a mesh system. The Unify system is actually access points that get installed with a cable connecting them to the router. Orbi is a mesh system where it has a backhaul um, wireless frequency channel that it, it communicates on to the other system, to the other units. Uh, both work very well, and Orbi has a business solution that uh, we could install. But that's our Wi-Fi solution for members. Sonos is our audio solution. You know, we, we like Sonos. You get a speaker and set it up and configure it on your network, and then it can play whatever across it. Now, I also use a lot of the Echo devices here at the house, so I have like six or eight of those things around. And I think they work great as a speaker. Now, I'm not an audiophile. I don't have a great ear for listening to music, but I think they sound pretty good just uh, whenever they connect with each other. Very simple setup, a lot simpler than Sonos even. Ring, you know, we want to do the doorbells and the cameras for everybody, lights because it's just cool and it uh, is safety and security. So it's that peace of mind thing, right? Like they, the member has the ring system and they can see what's going on at their house. iCloud, uh, Google Drive, like all those offsite storage things that allowed you to easily share between devices. Very, very important for making happy members, which is our goal is to make happy, happy, happy members. The tools that we use, we use HubSpot. Um, HubSpot is a CRM, a customer relationship management system. Uh, we use it to create tickets for every request that a member has. If the request is multi-step, we create a deal for it. And then the deal has multiple tickets assigned to it. The reason we do that is we, we want to keep track of larger requests that a member has and, and the tickets can then be assigned to different divisions. Um, so that in the past, what we would do is we'd have one ticket for a large deal and it would always get lost and confused because people were just trying to put notes in it. With a deal now and multiple tickets, we can say one ticket's for an outside nerd to go pick up a computer, another ticket's for GTC to do an upgrade, another tickets for an outside nerd to deliver it, another tickets for an outside nerd to, or a remote nerd to verify that it's online and working properly, you know, something like that. And then we complete that deal. Just makes it a lot easier for us to bill in smaller pieces also, which is very important. Slack, uh, we use Slack for the nerd collective is what we call it. So that's the, that's the way that you guys all communicate to each other, ask each other for help and questions and solve problems. It's just our instant messaging app for everybody to talk to each other. 
G Suites is where we create documents and spreadsheets and presentations and all kinds of stuff. So it's our storage device plus our document management uh, creation system. Uh, LastPass is our credentials manager. So that's where we have all of the usernames and passwords and even uh, <laughs> sensitive documents for our members and for our company. Uh, we use, I think we use LastPass Teams maybe. Is that right, Will? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. We're, I don't think we use Enterprise. I think we use Teams. Um, yeah. And that allows all of you guys to have your own login. You can have a private LastPass that you use that's separate from your business LastPass, but you can access all the same credentials at the same time yourself. But if you create a private version, uh, no one else can see it, like not even me, no one can see it except you. But you can still log into them at the same time with one email account. Uh, T-Sheets is how you guys tell us, you know, how much time you spent working, and that's how we run payroll and, and pay you guys. And when we do payroll via uh, QuickBooks into its payroll, and those checks go out direct deposit. Member onboarding, um, I know this may, uh, I just wanted to go over this. You guys may know this, may not know this. It's cool, however. Probably need a gizmo guide updated for this. There's gizmo guides out there or nerd operating manuals in the old format, but we need a good gizmo guide for member onboarding. So members sign up via the website. So whenever they log in, I mean, they don't log in, they go to the website, neighborhoodnerds.com slash membership. They can read all about it and they click the button there to join. When they join, they're using a plugin in our WordPress site called Paid Memberships Pro, which captures their name and address and phone number and um, their credit card information. That credit card information is sent over to Stripe. So Stripe is our credit card processing for recurring payments. So when, the, when they sign up, it automatically charges their card for that first uh, 199 bucks. Plus it starts charging them 99 bucks a month automatically. Now, we also put their information in QuickBooks, but that is manually done right now. So we have to take, when a new member signs up, we have to manually enter their information into QuickBooks so that we can track the for bookkeeping purposes. Um, something that's supposed to happen that doesn't happen automatically right now, so it requires the account managers to do this function is the welcome packet needs to be sent out. We have a template email and we have a PDF of the welcome packet, but that needs to be manually sent by the nerds right now. So the, I mean, the account managers right now. So uh, Will and Michael are talking about helping out with account management roles instead of us staffing a new account manager. Um, and that would be one of the things they would do. So they would look for a new member signing up and they would send them this email uh, saying, hey, welcome to Neighborhood Nerds. Um, please complete this form and schedule your initial discovery visit. So the information form is what we send them that uh, lets them tell us all about themselves, who's in their house, um, what weird technology they have, what normal technology they have, what are some red button issues that they have. And, and if you look at the members profiles inside of HubSpot, you can go find those fields and read about those members. like. They'll tell you where to park, you know, and uh, whether you should wear your shoes coming into the house or not, like all kinds of stuff. So, you know, you want to read about the members inside of HubSpot. Initial discovery visit is when an, when an outside nerd goes and meets the member and kind of updates and improves their um, profile for all the other nerds. They will, you know, collect some information. We call it an IDV. Um, short, you know, initial discovery visit. So whenever they come in, they uh, dog. So they, we, the outside nerd goes and does the initial discovery visit. You make sure that the address is correct. You know, you meet the, the members and introduce yourself. You get, you collect all the information that we need to collect. So we need to know what service providers they use, like what is they use for cable TV and internet and phones and everything else. Plus, what do they use for, um, you know, like the uh, 
what kind of computers do they have, what kind of network do they have. That part of the initial discovery visit is looking for those opportunities to serve them, right? So we know that we provide Orbi systems. We know that we provide Ring systems. We know that we provide Sonos systems. So those are the things that you guys are looking for when you're doing an initial discovery visit. Do they have a Ring doorbell? Do they have any security cameras? Do they have any old audio equipment that was a multi-zone equipment? Do they have, um, you know, like uh, what kind of Wi-Fi do they have? So you're going through and you're looking for those things because those are the solutions we want to offer them immediately to make them healthier and happier. Computer cleanup setup. Well, actually, we call it cleanup setup because it's for all devices, right? Like we want to get iPads in and phones and everything else uh, along with computers and Anything that they have should come through computer cleanup, I mean, should come through cleanup setup in the GTC. Every time something's in GTC, GTC should record it inside HubSpot. We need to know uh, model numbers and, and, you know, make model year, uh, operating system levels, firmware levels, um, everything about the devices that our members have. We need to know that. Request workflow, a new request comes in, and Michael is working on a, an actual graphic for this, and I think Will's helping with that too right now. Everybody can help with it. It's on uh, our Miro site that we use. So a new request comes in. One of the first things that we do is we update and perfect. Most new requests are probably going to come in through remote help. Some will come in in person through an outside nerd or an inside nerd. So when you create a request, you need to update and perfect, which means you need to send the confirmation email saying, hey, we got your request. You need to um, update the, the name of the ticket so that you have the member's name, hyphen, and a brief description so we can easily find it, and the description of the ticket. You also need to update the association uh, with the contact and the company so that we get off to a good start with that ticket. You know, all the information's updated. We know who it belongs to, and we've sent the confirmation email. Put it in the appropriate pipeline. So, you know, we have a bunch of pipelines inside of HubSpot that are for inside nerds, outside nerds, remote help, GTC. So whoever's going to be doing the actual work for the members, drop that ticket into that pipeline. Always work Gizmo Circle of Care. So, you know, you want to discover and ask a bunch of questions and plan and review with the member. Um, so you're always working Gizmo Circle of Care. Recommendation. Uh, we send that email, and then if they accept the recommendation, we implement the solution. We always send a recap email because we don't want to surprise members with billing or anything else. So we say, hey, this is what we accomplished. This is what we did during this visit. And again, it's always great if you have time, pick up the phone and call the member. Call the member before you send these emails or right after and say, hey, I just sent you this email. just want to make sure that you got it and everything's cool and you understand what we're talking about here. Um, billing will probably be charging your card this amount, and that was for the work that we did the other day. Educate uh, the member like on, you know, this is what we did and this is how it works and send them a gizmo guide, you know, whatever you can do. And then billing will get it billed and then we need to make sure we maintain it uh, as we go forward. So we've documented everything in their profile and everything in HubSpot and created gizmo guides, whatever we need to do so that the next member can take care of them just as easily as the first the first nerd did. All right, uh, reviews and recommendations are super important to us. Most of our business new members come from word of mouth. So the better job you guys do of loving on your members and making them excited about being members, the more they tell other friends and family about us, and the more people sign up. Sharing stories is a really good way to do this. So we want uh, to share lots of stories online of, you know, what, what did we do for this member and how excited were they about that and how unique was this experience for this member, you know. So share some of those cool stories. The, what, what you guys need to do as the nerds is document in the ticket and then we have a new nerd that's coming in that's doing uh, marketing, advertising stuff she will get with you to write up those stories and get them out to educate the world you know about it. Um, you know, we want to offer incentives. So we want to offer 
something to the members for providing reviews and recommendations for us on Google, Yelp, Facebook, whatever. You know, maybe it's, um, you know, opportunity to win a prize or maybe it's uh, whoever writes a review gets, you know, some gizmo bucks that they can buy some stuff with, you know, or a, a card that they can give to somebody, something. Always be selling. Uh, make sure that you guys, you know, that ABC is always be closing. Always be selling. Like, uh, take the opportunity with every engagement that you have with a member to talk about uh, what you guys did and how cool it is and ask them to recommend and refer some people. Uh, so, you know, if you had a good time, a good experience with this, please let your friends and family know about it. Uh, maybe you want to write a review for us online or something. Um, you know, that, that helps us help you. The more members we have, the better it works for everybody. Educating the world, we need to let everybody know what's unique and different about Gizmo Cares and especially Neighborhood Nerds. There's not really anything like Neighborhood Nerds out there, so people are a little confused. Um, so we have to do some education of the kinds of things that we do for them. You know, we want happy members, uh, that we get happy members by engaging more often. So the more you guys can talk to them, the more you guys can email them, the more you guys can spend time with them, the better it is for the company and for you. You want to be super friendly every time that you meet with a member. You want to smile all the time. Um, smile when you're on the phone, smile when you're talking to them, smile when you're hanging out with them. It makes a big difference. And you know, you'll hear this in the corporate world, like especially if you do any kind of customer service anywhere. When you smile, your attitude is different. Your personality is different. So you want to smile all the time. Uh, we want to be more proactive instead of reactive. We want to get away from this break-fix model and work more towards providing solutions to members and looking for opportunities to have happy engagements and fun engagements. Uh, the quick tips are really good for this. The um, tech talks that we used to do, which we need to get back to doing in the member center where they're in-person tech talks, uh, those kinds of things really help us. We are not break fix and we don't want to be break fix. So we want to be all about the relationship and proactively preventing the member from having issues and prescribing the right technology. You know, break fix is a model that's in, been in existence forever and still very strong in the IT world of the member, I mean, the, member, the customer, the client calls when they have a problem and then pays you a dollar amount to fix it. That's, a, that's an antiquated model and a poor model and kind of sets you up to already be on the opposite side of the fence from your client. What incentive do you have to do a good job? You know, a lot of, pe a lot of those guys and gals don't have repeat business, so they're all the time hunting for the next client to take care of. Um, members have, or clients have very short memories of what you did good for them. Uh, you're only as good as your last mistake most times. So it's just a hard world. Um, that's why we want to disrupt everything with this neighborhood nerds model of being more of a proactive relationship model. We set the members up for success. We come in and we do the initial discovery visit. We get a punch list of things we want to do for them to get them on the right foot and get them set up to move forward in a positive manner, not have sad calls for us. We want to save them time always. Their time is super valuable. You know, we have members that are worth, you know, thousands of dollars an hour and we need to respect that and 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 understand that what we're saving them by saving them a few minutes by sitting on hold by working with a vendor we're saving that member you know time which is money for them uh, we want to provide peace of mind so they they need to be very comfortable that when they hand us something it's going to get done we need to demonstrate that over and over again so next steps, we're going to continue monthly reviews. Just grab some time on my calendar with Google Meet. Um, you know, you guys know how to do that already. It's got that link out there with Calendly. Uh, you guys can do it just directly on a calendar too. Just schedule it on my calendar wherever you see a slot. Since my calendar shared with you for our monthly review meetings, quarterly team meetings. This is our second one. We're going to continue these. 
Um, feel free to you know, make suggestions about topics you would like to see in the quarterly meetings uh, so that we can add those in. Um, group, I mean, grow membership. We want to always be growing membership. Uh, the more members we have, the more good we can do in the world with the kingdom funds, the more nerds we can hire, the more member centers we can have. Um, so just a, it's a good thing. The more we grow the membership, the better it is for everyone. How can you help? Like I said, always be selling. So every time you talk to a member, ask them for a referral from somebody else. Every engagement should be an opportunity to for you to remind them that you want to be helping other people too. You know, that you love them, but you would also love to help some other people too. So they can invite some friends or family in, that'd be great. We wanna grow GTC, so we wanna focus on um, finding opportunities for GTC. So everybody should be looking for Sonos opportunities and ring opportunities. So even when you're driving into work, walking around a neighborhood, if you see a doorbell that's a normal doorbell, <laughs> you know, that's an opportunity for a ring system. Maybe uh, you know, put a little post-it note or something on their mailbox of, hey, you know, I noticed you didn't have a, a ring camera system. Uh, give us a call. We can help you out. Um, more member centers. So that's going to be really a result of more members. So as you guys grow members, we're going to look for places to open new member centers. Uh, it's going to be more of a response to the demand. So that is it. Sorry, I ran a little long, longer than an hour, but uh, that's what we wanted to get done today. Any questions?